Hey everybody, it's episode 157 of the Author Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Hank Garner. Please visit hankgarner.com and check out the show notes uh, of the show. There's lots of great stuff there. You can also subscribe to the show and dig through all of the archives. Uh, There's so much writerly goodness there. I don't even uh, know where to tell you to begin. Go back to the beginning and listen all the way forward. Uh, I know there's going to be some uh, something there that really motivates you, resonates with you, or maybe you learn something new about your favorite author. And we've got some great sponsors this week. Uh, Tales from the Canyons of the Damned. Uh, my good friend Daniel Arthur Smith is the helmsman of this fantastic series and uh, their latest one is uh, Canyons of the Damned in Space Uh, the second edition uh, just came out some fantastic stories there some of the best cover art uh, in publishing right now go pick it up and you know what order the uh, the paperbacks because these are absolutely collectible editions I hope you'll go pick those up and let Daniel know that I sent you Uh, I also saw Daniel mention today that they have a Valentine's uh, Tales from the Canyons of the Damned coming up. Cannot wait to read those pulpy goodness stories just for Valentine's Day. Uh, also, I'll be continuing my uh, my story thread for Crossroads coming up soon, so be sure to check those out. Also, Nick Cole brings us Fight the Rooster. Fight the Rooster's challenger for best read of the year. Well worth a look. An amazing job, says Tim Ward. Hugo nominated reviewer and host of the Sci-Fi Podcast. Uh, Fight the Rooster is a little departure for Nick. It's uh, kind of a dark Hollywood story, so go check it out. Fight the Rooster by Nick Cole. Uh, Link in the show notes. Also, my good friends at thirdscribe.com want to remind you that if you are an author and you need a platform, of course you need a platform. Uh, But if you need help with your platform, go visit Rob and the good folks at thirdscribe.com. They will help you get started. If you're a reader... And you want to know more about some of your favorite authors, go sign up at ThirdScribe. It's a place where readers and writers connect in a really cool and novel new way. I told Rob recently that I'm going to start uh, doing some of my personal blogging over at ThirdScribe. Uh, I host the podcast here at HankGarner.com, but uh, I really want to do some kind of off-the-cuff writing. And I'm going to do some of that over at ThirdScribe. So uh, go check them out, ThirdScribe.com. Also, Eric Totsi, uh this week brings us The Scout, and if you'll listen for just a second, he's going to tell you all about it. Also, don't forget Audible.com. AudibleTrial.com slash Hank lets you sign up for free and get a free audiobook. Thank you for listening. Change is inevitable. It's heading for Earth at 12,000 miles per hour, and it will land virtually undetected. For Jack McAllister, a young writer who has finally launched a career for himself, it begins tragically. His estranged father, a former NASA engineer, dies suddenly at his home in Meriwether, Indiana, leaving Jack's Alzheimer-stricken mother a widow. But in the wake of personal heartbreak, he's confronted by an even more astonishing event, the covert landing of an alien machine in the forest just a few miles outside of town. Now Jack must unmask the true purpose of the otherworldly device that has begun a detailed environmental survey of the woods. Aided by the town's young and resilient female deputy sheriff, he soon discovers that the alien scout is only one small part of a much larger operation, and the countdown to a terrifying global catastrophe is about to take place. Drawing deeply from his father's scientific influence, Jack uncovers and ultimately finds himself an unwilling component of an alien plan set to terminate life on Earth as we know it. Crichton-esque techno-thriller with enough twists and turns to keep you turning those pages. The rural setting and the believable character set this apart from the majority of alien invasion novels. Sci-Fi365.net The Scout by Eric Totsi, now available at Amazon.com. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. I'm really excited uh, to have my guest on today, Christopher Grayson. Uh, His latest book is called And Then She Was Gone, and he's also the author of the Detective Jack Stratton series. Uh, Welcome to the show, Christopher. 
Thank you very much for having me. I really uh, appreciate it. You're welcome. It. I'm glad to have you on. Uh, I begin each show with a variation of the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer and or storyteller? I think I've always wanted to be a, a, a storyteller. I can't remember. I was trying to rack my brain for when storyteller kicked in, and I think I was just born storyteller. But the writer, um, I can remember specifically, I um, was encouraged both by my, my mom and the, an unbelievable teacher that I had to read Tolkien, and I hit the end. And, you know, of course, back then, you had to wait to go to the library, you had to wait to get more books, and there weren't any other books. <laughs> I reached the end, what do I do? And I wanted to, to write to continue that, to continue the story. Um, and uh, I had a teacher that, uh, he, I, I actually brought him up, and unfortunately, we waited too long and he had passed away. And um, to tell him how instrumental he had been in my life. And uh, just an absolutely great guy. Um, very tall, imposing figure in sixth grade. But he had a, I didn't know what an eclectic background he had from theater and teaching. And he used to come and start every year with, he memorized the poem, The Raven. And it just, he would say it and it would just charge up the class. And I remember thinking, oh, that's such a, a, a great quality. Just learning early on that the, the power of those words could stir people. Oh, it, it just, it, 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 it ignited people. And, um, I've always been, you know, I loved, uh, drama and he was actually, he, um, loved the opera, this, this teacher. And we, he would talk about different plays and even just talking about how it affected people and how you could reach, um, different, um, groups of people. And I really, I, I think, you know, you live in vicariously through them, you know, with stories. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, just another thing that really, you know, set me on fire. I think as a, as a bright eyed kid, I, I have it on my, um, in my background that my, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather and he was a World War One vet and he used to tell the most amazing stories and they're all lighthearted stories, nothing bad about the war, but it made you want to, you know, experience some of these things, see the different things in the world. Like he didn't talk about the trenches. He talked about like when he was in Holland once and he heard all this sound and he looked up and it was all the people running with wooden shoes. <laughs> like really they wore wooden shoes? And, uh, you know, those things. And I think that, that love of storytelling, and that's where I really consider myself a storyteller. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I added the storyteller uh, element to that question because uh, Craig Johnson, who's the, the author of the Walt Longmire uh, novels, uh, when I asked him that question, he said, well, you know, storytelling goes back farther than that because there's this great tradition of oral oral storytelling, especially like in the in the cowboy uh, tradition. And, and so we start talking about that, and, and uh, I came to realize that storytelling is in itself is an art form, and then writing – is uh is oftentimes connect, oftentimes connected to that, but not always. But uh, uh, you know, I believe we're we're born storytellers. I think there's there's something in our human nature uh, that wants to communicate things with one another. And you know, for millennia, that's how we survived as a people was telling stories. Uh, but then you start working on the craft of writing and taking that storytelling and 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 honing it and uh. How old were you, do you think, when, when that Tolkien experience happened for you, where you wanted to continue the story? Um, it was sixth okay. grade. It was in, uh, I remember it uh, uh, pretty vividly, just because I was I was so depressed that the books ended. I mean, I devoured The Hobbit in only, you know, a few days. And my mom, my mom would always talk about it. Her birthday's on Sunday. She's going to be 83. And... Um, she would go back and say, you know, I, I'd come running up with reports of, you know, all the different wonderful names that and places that Tolkien developed, you know, and I'd talk about them. And um, it was just, it, it was something that um, I couldn't believe that you could you, you know, pick up a pen and you could continue it if I wanted to. And, um, and, I, and I loved it. I just absolutely loved doing it. And I think that's why my first book I ever wrote was Pure of Heart. And um, it's a fantasy book. 
So I, I still have such a fondness for the genre yeah. too. Uh, and I want to get to that in just a minute. But uh, the the teachers uh, that you had that made such an impact on you, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a couple of really impactful teachers in my life. Uh, one of them I'm still great friends with to this day. Uh, he was actually a shop teacher who taught me more about creativity than just about anybody in the world. Uh, but then also an English teacher and she would, uh, she would slip me books kind of subversively, you know, and, and, uh, you know, she would, she would slip me a book and then, and then she'd kind of take it back and say, Oh, I don't think you're ready for that yet. And, and, Oh man, that would just drive me nuts, you know, and then she would, you know, slip me the book and, and, uh, we had this great year of, uh, you know, she just instilled this, uh, uh, this kind of subversive love for, for books. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, I, I love hearing those stories about people that, uh, you know, to, to no gain of their own, uh, really pour into young people, especially. And, uh, you know, w- would you like to, to speak more about that, uh, how those people, uh, kind of affected you? Oh, uh, certainly. Uh, for example, Mr. Collins, I actually, um, he uh, was my sixth grade teacher, and he was such an incredible man. He's a, a tall African American man with a, like a deep, booming voice. But he carried himself so gracefully; he was always immaculately dressed. And um, I asked my mom, "I'm like, do we have him? Do we have him for dinner? Can I have my, you know, teacher over?" And he was he had such um, an important, I think, just legacy if you think of the stories. And he would try to use those stories to teach us. Like he marched with Martin Luther King and I know Martin Luther King um, day, was, you know, just on Monday and he would tell us, you know, about that and how he felt and some of the experiences with him growing up. And um, he would also, you know, just take that, you know, that time um, with you, the, the, the patience. And I think at sixth grade, it's such a, you know, a pivotal time, um, in the in the life of a child, that um, it was really important, and it was also important too because, um, you know, for me, um, I'm the youngest of six, and my father passed away when I was a month old. So, without having that, I had my grandfather figure, um, but there's that void of the you know the the father figure, you know that um, you know a boy you know connects to, and then to have someone, you know. Um, say how much, you know, how important education is. And my mother always told me that my mother is an um, elementary school art teacher and an artist of, um, I hold her in the highest regard. And my father was a mathematician. And so I believe in the, the power of teachers and how they can just really, you know, influence generations. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you had this this love stoked in you, and uh, you knew that you wanted to be a storyteller. Uh, I'm always fascinated at what happens between that moment and you actually writing that first book. Like, uh, did you did you pursue being a writer, uh, you know, in your education and in your career, or was this something that came to you uh, after uh, you know, kind of preparing and doing something else in life? It was, <laughs> I had a very eclectic road. I ended and mo- up, most people um, did. Most people do. So. I got into script writing and um, just for the, I started drama in sixth grade too. And just absolutely, I storyteller for me first and foremost. I just fell in love with her. And so um, I started going down that road and ended up going through high school and college with the intent on um, being an actor. And I actually did a little bit of dancing on <laughs> Baryshnikov, but uh, I love that too. I love dance. I love, you know, the, the arts in general. And then I, um, I blew up my knee in um, a dance show. So it's sort of like the, the football injury where I broke four ligaments in my knee, ended up in the hospital. And, um, at that time, I had a lot of people say, you know what, this dream of being an actor, it's never going to happen. You need to get practical with your life and, um, you know, do something. So I switched gears to computers. And 
Um, but during that time is when I wrote my first book. And I, <laughs> I wrote uh, Pure of Heart, which is a fantasy book, while I was laid up. And it took me a few years, but I did it just, just to write it. I had no intent on publishing it. I had no intent on um, what to do with it. Because, I mean, back then, everything was, you had to go to, you know, uh, get an agent, go to a publishing house. And I knew nothing about it. I just wanted to write. So when I, after I finished it, somebody convinced me to send it, send it along. And I sent it along. The, you know, the typical route was it box up and in the mail. And I waited six months, and I got a message back that said they really liked it, but it wasn't right for them. Mm-hmm. And, and the person said, can I send it off to a different publishing house? I'm like, oh, by all means. But I was a college student at the time. The whole process took over a year. <laughs> it's just long. And so um, I actually went down the computer road. And then, and um, it wasn't until my wife, who was a writer and um, an unbelievable writer, she had written several stories, and she said she wanted some help on the computer end of getting them out there. And quite frankly, I didn't want to mess anything up for her. And everything had changed at that time, because now you have all the eBooks and the whole digital platforming and independent publishing, and I'm like, it's a whole new world. So I needed a book. And I said, oh, why don't I just, why don't I write another one? And so I wrote Girl Jack so I could have something in order to write it. And the minute I started writing it, I was bit again. <laughs> so I jumped back in and then uh, I, I had to actually, I looked back, I did something and I, you know, the minute I started, I said, oh, I forgot what this feeling is like. I mean, it's just... And by that time, I've learned enough that, you know, you got to follow your dream. You know, dare to dream, dream big, all those things where, you know, and that's what I try to tell everybody now. And people say, um, it was funny, a friend of mine, his wife wants to write, and he came up to me when I first started, and I ran into him a, a little while ago, and I'm like, how's your wife's book? Because she said, you know, she was going to write at the same time. And he's like, she hasn't done it, but now I keep pointing out she's telling her about you. And I'm like, you have to do it. And um, I think that's the most important thing is just the, the do it factor. Yeah. Um, I, I joke about the first book I wrote uh, that I'd been threatening uh, to write a book for quite a while. And uh, and one day my wife was like, well, why don't you quit talking about it and, you know, get the computer out and write the freaking book. And <laughs> and I did. And, you know, I, I think uh, that's it's definitely a dream for a lot of people. I think if you ask 100 people, you know, if they think they have a book in them, uh, a, a great majority would say yes. And maybe one of those people out of 100 is going to sit down and write that book. You just got to do it. Yeah, and and I think I think part of it the uh, not knowing or not thinking. I mean, for me, it, it's not work. You know, it's the most enjoyable part of it when I can when I sit down with you know fingers on a keyboard or anything. I was I was writing last night on my phone now. <laughs> like, oh yeah! I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh oh, this is good. And usually I'm just doing a note or you know. At that time, right. I, just, I just keep going with it, and I'm like, I, I don't know how many words I have that my little note app is going to handle, so I better stop and email yeah. this to myself. Yeah. Well, then, and, and you've got uh, folks like Chris Fox, uh, who's been on the show before, and and he uh, he was a computer programmer, and uh, during his commute, when he was waiting for a bus or train or whatever it was, uh, he would pull out his phone and use the little voice dictation app and uh and and write you know several thousand words while he's sitting there waiting for public transportation and uh you know got got his grind on like that for for quite a while i mean there's so many options available now it's crazy yeah i I just think i think it's just crazy awesome you know that they just have you know everything from the ipads to i picked up a great little um um portable keyboard for my phone. Yeah. And I got one of those, oh, yeah. you know, the, the, the big phones where I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, now I can see. You know, now I have this and then I am off to the races. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't know anything about that uh, needing bigger screens. That's uh, totally foreign to me. <laughs> Not. <laughs> 
Well, uh, tell me a little bit about Pure of Heart, because uh, one thing that really intrigued me about your writing and your books is that you straddle genre uh, kind of unlike anybody I have seen uh, before. So Pure of Heart is this epic fantasy, but it's a time travel book. And it's got uh, action, and it's uh, it's got some romance, and it's funny, and uh, which is which is awesome. So, kind of tell me a little bit about that book. You said it was the first one, uh, but and then kind of transition from that and, and talk a little bit about your thoughts about this kind of genre straddling or kind of having uh, three feet in different genres. <laughs> I don't know if it's the wisest thing and um, to do, but it, it's sort of like like me, and I think sort of um, go. It's it's basically I, I like write about life, and to me, life ha- has all those elements in it. You know, there. I mean, if you look at it, Juliet, you you have the the romance, you have the tragedy, you have the, and it matters what part of it you want to. I think sometimes, you know, emph- so um, with Pure of Heart, I write about these fantasy worlds, and so many people, you know, don't aren't aren't used to that. And I was coming from a background of, you know, going to talk to people about trolls and orcs, and they're like, what are these things? And just completely clueless. So then I had the idea of, well, what if I can sort of bring them in, you know, and have a bridge? And that bridge became the idea for the story of how it had somebody from this world. And I, I do, um, you know, the, the old adage, write about what you know. So um, I think people with dad issues are sort of a theme in my book, <laughs> in my books. <laughs> in the collection, but um, it's about a you know a young man in this world who goes to a yeah. fantasy world and just you know that old the old adage you know um, what if what would happen? Um, I read something by James Scott Bell, and I I'm gonna um, I don't know who he, he quoted the person that said it, where he said you know the 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 cat sat on a mat is not a story, but the cat sat on a dog's mat. Now that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the premise of, you know, somebody that, um, you know, um, from here, going there and what happens to them. And um, I, I also try to be, you know, encouraging in a way. I mean, there is a, you know, an arc um, to this, you know, the stories. It's, I, I think from an easier standpoint, if you take somebody that's down, you know, and um, and life's been hard to them, and people can relate to that because life's hard to everybody. I, I mean, I've never been to anybody that's like, boy, this life thing, boy, it's a walk in the park. So, so I throw a lot in there, and I, I like the humor, and I, I love action, and, um, you know, who doesn't like a little bit of, you know, romance in it, and, um, you know, I... I Reading to me is, you know, such escapism, and especially, you know, today nowadays, it um, time is such a valuable thing. And I'm really trying. I'm blown away that anybody reads my books, and I try to be respectful of their time. So, with uh, the storytelling part, I think the transitioning from like, like you brought up the, you know, storytelling different from writing, and it is because you can't just ramble like I'm doing now. Um, if you're going to be uh, cognizant of people's time. So you want to pick and choose the elements that you bring out. And I learned a lot of that in drama and doing the plays. Like I saw an excellent production of um, Romeo and Juliet, which I brought up earlier. And they added the, just a little twist where Romeo, and right before he dies, he sees Juliet move. And you saw it in his face. He acted an unbelievable performance. But it really punched on the tragedy. And, um, but there was, there's a lot of, there's, there's, there's action in that. There's a, so, um, I think it, um, I like doing it. I, I, I'm sometimes a little worried about <laughs> genre. Huh? I just wonder also. 
I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you said earlier that you're, you know, such a, a big Tolkien fan, and a lot of us that love fantasy, of course, uh, are Tolkien fans. He's, he's kind of the, the grandfather of our genre. Uh, and so you know, there's always the hat tip to to Tolkien and what he started. Uh, but we all can't be Tolkien, and, and we all don't need to tell that story over and over and over again. There's only so many ways, you know, you can tell the uh, that the little guy goes on an adventure story. But I do love seeing people that take those influences and bring a new twist and a new uh, shed a new light on it. So uh, I, I really appreciate that. Oh, uh, but sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say yeah, saying it. Thank you. And actually, um, I I I try not to. Uh, limit myself. It's not really like a conscious choice. It's just, uh, I always have a few rods in the fire. Somebody asked me and they're like, Oh, you know, do you just focus on one book? I'm like, no, I can't. I, you know, what if, you know, what if I send it off to whatever? I can't stand around. I go, I, I go out of my mind if I can't write. And I, um, I got, I'm working on a thriller and it just, it also ignites, I think you're just creative juices too. When you, when you jump in and start trying different things, you know, like, um, I try to, you know, when I talk to people, I like, try first person, try third person, try, try different, you know, styles, get out of your comfort zone, you know, and just, just write. Yeah. Um, you said that girl jacked was your second book, uh, because you needed something to do, uh, after yeah. that, where, where did that story come from? <laughs> As I said, my, my wife's a writer. She's unbelievable. She's also my content editor, my marketer. Um, she just blows me away. I'm really just riding her coattails. Um, <laughs> I needed something for her uh, to, to, to go into the whole ebook. What is this whole new ebook uh, land that we're in? And um, the story of Jack just, you know, basically came. Like I said, I, I have a lot of. Um, I think it's background of an eclectic background and, you know, some of the, there, I try to get people to connect with people, um, you know, to do it in a literary sense, but also do it in a real world sense, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. So I try to vary things up. So for like, for example, Jack, um, was raised, his mother was a prostitute. So in the, in the book, and then she was gone. He's he's walking, and a prostitute uh, originally, hit, you know, solicits him, and um, he keeps walking. And she says, "Can I just, you know, I'm hungry, and it leaves money for." Her. And instead of just, you know, leaving it at that, you know, from Jack's perspective, he's looking at this girl, and the thing that bothers him is, is that she reminds him of the girl that read him Green Eggs and Ham when he was a kid. You know, and trying to get people to think, you know. Uh, you know, a little outside the box and a little bit, you know, um, of people at a, you know, a different angle, flip things on its head. So, um, so Girl Jacked ended up being um, my second book. And once I started with those, like the whole mystery thing genre, I actually tried to vary it up. So the first one is you know, more of murder mystery. It's a cold case. Then the third one's a kidnapping and then you have a serial killer, and um, I guess I can't just leave it alone. I gotta flip it. Yeah. Well, I've I've been on a I've been on a bit of a mystery thriller bend uh, lately, and uh, I I found you through your book, uh, and then she was gone, and then from there kind of started getting through your back catalog, and and I was like, man, this guy's really interesting. I've got to get him on the show. <laughs> uh, but this this character of Jack. Um, so you 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 bring him in in the second book, uh, but he he obviously didn't leave you alone uh, from there. W tell me a little bit about this character and what it is about him that's so endearing and enduring to you. I, I try really like almost like a method writer to put myself in the character's shoes. Um, and with Jack, it was just, it, 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 it felt like a good pair of shoes when you slip them on or, you know, a nice jacket. I, um, I love Jack. He, he, yeah, I think me epitomizes really comes from this really hard, hard life, but he's got a good heart. Um, 
but he's also, you know, torn, you know, with that. He has a lot of, um, he has a lot of anger issues. He has a lot of, um, he was messed up and he, um, and he, he's had that role. So he was, you know, his mother was a prostitute and he had a horrible childhood, but then he went to a foster home and he meets these, you know, um, Aunt Hattie and she takes care of him. And even though they have very little, they're happy. And he sees that happiness and he wants it. And then he gets, you know, adopted and things don't go, you know, well, when he goes into the army and his friends killed and he's never really dealt with demons of his past, you know, and those scars. And I think that's like, well, that happens to a lot of people. So for me, it, um, you know, connected, you know, he, he connects with me in a lot of, you know, on a lot of different levels. Cause I try to put a lot of, um, experiences that I see, you know, from other people, um, you know, into the books. So, um, to some people, I mean, you just meet people that just touch you. And I'm the type of person, where, you know, if I, <laughs> I'm talking to a friend of mine and it was obviously that they had an ankle monitor, you know, after being recently released from incarceration. And I'm like, can you take a, get to take a bath with that? Like stick your leg out of the tub, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, it's first all, you know, an angst and it's like, I don't want to overstep, but I, I have to say that a lot. And, you know, they're like, no, no, no. And they're like, I didn't know that either. And I got to the, you know, the top and um, they didn't know what to do. And I try to, you know, with, with talking to people, you know, take those, those and pour them into characters. And so Jack is, he's a collection of broken. And, um, but you don't want to just, you know, leave them there. And that's why Alice is really his, um, you know, completes him. And I find that a lot of times in life that happens, sort of like you have, you know, two um, glass pitchers that get shattered. You'll never put one of them back together, but you could actually make one from the two pieces. And I think that they sort of, you know, in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, uh, I like what you said about kind of inquiring about things that you find uh, curious or interesting because uh, some of the best book ideas I've gotten have just been because I'm I'm an extremely curious person, uh, probably nosy, uh, you know, to an extent <laughs> you know, where I just want to I want to understand how things work and I want to understand what motivates people and uh, some people are not comfortable with that but I just it's it's genuine like. Uh, you know, I, I want to know. It's not because I'm I'm making fun of people. Or I just genu- genuinely want to know what makes people who they are, uh, oh. and I think that's a, a great uh, uh, tool for writers. You never need to lose that curiosity uh, because it it can lead to some of the greatest discoveries for writers ever. Oh, I, 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 or, um, and just like in talking to people and getting to know people. And in one way, I think being an extrovert has really, really helped me. And, and, and you know, with the, the, the theater, like I came out of the supermarket the other day and 14 year old son, I was waving to these people. My 14 year old son was waiting for me and my daughter in the car. Was like, Do you know them? I go, I just met them in the line. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you. And I'm like, oh, the line was slow when I got to talking. But the, the more you talk, like, you know, you go to the doctors, and you just, I, I talk to people and I ask them all the questions of, you know, what about this and what about that? And um, the more knowledge you have, I think you can, the more threads, I guess, that you have, the, the more elaborate tapestry you could weave. Right. Right. And uh, I, when, when writers tell me that, uh, that their characters are not based on anyone they know or have ever met, I know right then that they're liars. Oh, uh, because I, I pour <laughs> people, <laughs> I pour people into my books all the time. You know, I'll meet someone, uh, you know, at the, at the grocery or something. I'm like, Oh, you are totally going in my next book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, I think, I think, you, you know, you have also a wonderful way to look at life. Like I, I came up with this idea. I'm trying to rock the year of happiness. Um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, it as a writer when you put yourself into, um, 
you know, different situations you can end up getting down. But now I'm trying to look at all situations like um, the third, one, one main part of the whole third book and an unreliable witness came from an actual conversation I had with a person that wasn't, um, wasn't, wasn't all there. So, and, uh, you know, but after the conversation, I'm like, Oh, that's just great. That's so old in my book. Um, right. Love it. Um, how, how far into the Jack series are you? And I know they're not, uh, they're connected through characters, but it's not a continuing storyline. Aren't they all standalone books? Standalone books, but it is a continual storyline. I don't stand alone, so anybody could pick it up and enjoy it without having to know everything. I I don't know why. I know where the story was going from the beginning. So, um, and that's part of the reason. Like, and then she was gone is actually like the technically the first part in the story. And I wrote that that one because I, I, it's the first chronological book to the story. Gotcha. Girl Jack was the first one. He met Jack when he was at his lowest. And I wanted people to see, and, and, and I actually, I had so many people write to me, going, what about Chandler? What about this? What about, oh, you know what, that was a great part of Jack's life. And um, my son actually gave me the idea. We were talking about it. I was lamenting it. He goes, why don't you just, I should. <laughs> so that's when that book came up. But um, it, 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 the books do follow uh, Jack and his size of Alice. Um, and their relationship, and as it grow, as it grows, and uh, the next one, Jack of Hearts, like um, Davy Jack just left off with Jack proposing, Jack proposing to Al. Jack of Hearts, they're gonna be, you're gonna find out what happens, and they go down to talk to his parents, and then they have Jack Frost, and um, any more to come. Nice, nice. Um, so with these characters, Jack and Alice, uh, you have this chemistry, you have uh, this relationship that you are cultivating throughout these books, uh, and your your books do have a, a strong romance element, but they are not romance books. Uh, they are mysteries, uh, thrillers, action, uh, and, and like we said earlier, there's, there's a good bit of humor. Do you ever... Uh, get people that uh, that don't quite understand uh, kind of a, a big burly guy like you writing books that have this strong romance element? Uh, yeah, all the time. No. <laughs> 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 you, you can. You can see it. And I, I think sometimes people don't, you know, um, I don't know if they, I don't know if they don't get it, you know, about the, um, you know, the, 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 the writing world. Um, but it just, it's, it's funny what, what people say. When you're a writer, I actually, I don't usually go around and be like, Oh, you know, um, but I was in the Apple store the other day and I was picking up some equipment and somebody asked me what I did. And I didn't even think about it. I'm like, Oh, I'm a writer. And I'm like, Oh, oh sh-. and the person just went, said, Oh, there's no money in that. And walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll tell one my mortgage word, company that as I pay. Right. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, but I think that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, people will, will, will have some preconceived notions or, um, but like we talked about earlier, just trying to get into the, the, the different genres and write about, you know, absolutely, you know, what you love. And um, that just comes out, you know, and uh, hopefully... You know, because I see so many people that um, I'm, I'm just looking. That's what you have interviewing. You know, you're like, oh, are we that? Oh, are we that? Oh, yeah, are we that? And there's so many different options available. Right, right. Um, you are uh, you are an indie author. We, we've talked about this this ebook uh, kind of revolution that happened a few years ago, and the power that it gave to authors to get our work out there. 
Um, you, your books are top notch productions. Uh, your covers are fantastic that, that, uh, and then she was gone, sold me on the cover alone, uh, when I didn't know anything about you. Wow. Thank uh, you. And then it drew, made it. then it drew, I'm sorry. I made it. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask you own- that. That's, <laughs> they are fantastic. They are absolutely fantastic. And, uh, I love hearing that. I, I I know there are, you know, over the the last few years, indie publishing has gone through several growth phases, and there are there are so many books now that you cannot tell the difference, uh, you know, just on on the, the the visuals and the the initial production, whether this is an indie book, if this is put out by one of the the big five, uh, you just can't tell. But there's so many professionals that are now catering to indies. Uh, you know, it's, it's just at a, a whole other place, but I, I love to hear authors that still embrace this kind of DIY, uh, attitude and, and still do it all themselves. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's so fascinating and so fun, but I definitely don't want to say I'm, I'm humbled by all the help I have received in the community and to do it. And, um, because they I, there, there's so many resources. I mean, look at you. You, you, you. you have the if somebody just listens to the podcast and the amount of knowledge you can gain from that, and then the other authors. I reach out to you, Howie and Ag Ridley, and um, and they're just so willing to help. And if you um, you know read the materials and people say, and it, it, you know, craft and at this time. Uh, you can get a crack at that, you know, with in the major leagues. I mean, nobody else can just walk on me. You know, hey, can I pick up the back? Can I? Pick up? <laughs> you know, start when you where you have that um, that chance. And again, I think that just trying to um, be so respectful of people's time that are willing to, you know, take a chance on. I'm, I'm blown away by. It. So I said, hey, and girl, Janet. I can't tell you how many times um, with reworking it and rework. And like Token, Token did the same thing where he chased down copies of his books and <laughs> there were a couple things to change. You know, you, you, you do it. You see um, some things that could change or, um, you know, some corrections. And, and now I'm excited because I, I, I just got the uh, audio book is being done and the, the person that's doing it is blowing me away. He's just so nice, so talented. And, um, that's, that's so great. But I wanted to hold I'm, off. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm super excited. If I, if I, if you remember name dropping, his name's Andrew Cal. And he's just a, he's just a, a great guy. And he's been just a, you know, an absolute pleasure to work with. And, um, it, it's, it's really, I think just, um, humbling and amazing that you can get the, you know, you, you take the time and you can get the hardcover books that just, the, you can't tell any difference, the paperbacks, the, the audio books and have the quality be, you know, be up there. It's, it's such an exciting time to be, to be a writer. Yeah. Um, I listen to a ton of audio books. Uh, d- just the, the, uh, the preparation for the show alone, um, I'm, I'm reading two or three books a week. And if it were not for audio books, I would drown. <laughs> I would, I would, could not keep up. Uh, but I, I'm glad that you mentioned the audio book because, uh, audible.com is a sponsor of the show. And if you go to audibletrial.com slash Hank, you can uh, sign up for a 30 day free trial, get a free audio book, whether you keep the service or not, the book is, uh, is yours to keep. When will, uh, and then she was gone be available on audible. It's going to be finalized this week. So, awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, in, only, in only a few weeks, uh, and, then she will, uh, and then she's gone will be uh, available. So I'm hoping within within five weeks you'd be safe to say it'll be available. Nice. So uh, so uh, go uh, add that to your pre-order queue, and uh, and then she was gone as our Audible pick coming up. Um, you, uh, in reading some of the reviews on your books, uh, you have some pretty bad fans uh, that, that seem to follow you book. Uh, how important is it to you 
to uh, to connect with your audience and to uh, keep in communication with them and to uh, you know uh, keep that reader base going. Uh, in, in all honesty, I'm like one of those insecure artists. You know, and especially with the, the 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 theatrical background, I love feedback. I mean, I used to do live plays and then um, work on camera. Different feeling when you're getting actual audience, and it helps with my. So I love being tap, tapped into the to the readers and uh, to connect with them. And when I hear, you know. Um, Stories it empowers me. I started. Uh, I was working two jobs, and I'd get up at four thirty in the morning, and I and I'd write before hard. And then when you start having people encouraging you, it really lifts you up. It became like you know when when Rocky would get up in the morning and he'd crack the eggs, and then but then by the end of the movie, people are running with him. It's amazing, right. and. uh it's why I do it. I mean, they just, they absolutely fire me up. So I try to keep the newsletters going. Um, I try to be um, more block centric, but um, I do sometimes, you, you do what you like, and I like to write. So. <laughs> love it. I, I love did it. sometimes uh, fall by to the, to the wayside. Right, right. Uh, Christopher, uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to come on the show this week. Um, tell everybody where they can connect with you and uh, where they can follow your work. Oh, yeah. I direct them to www.christophergrayson.com. You can find out about new releases. There's a bunch of stuff up happening in 2017. I'm going to um, be making some uh, really exciting announcements about not just the, the audio book, but... Um, Going to have a couple of books released in 2017. And, uh, I'm very excited about it. And um, sign up for the newsletter. I'd love to hear from you. And if anybody ever has any questions, um, ask. Ask away. I think it's one big, uh, happy community, I think, as far as authors talking to authors and authors talking to readers and vice versa. Awesome. Uh, Christopher, thanks for uh, coming on the show and thanks for all that you do. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. If there's anything I can do for you, uh, please let me know. Thanks for listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Join me each Tuesday and Friday at hankgarner.com for a new episode. Thanks for listening.